All right, Juan and Allison, here you go. So, I've got a variety of things here and I'm missing something. I will need a set of alligator clip wires and I did not bring them here. So, there's probably some around, but I'll probably need a set. So, I'll get to that point in a minute. Um, I think, two. yeah, two, but I got a long way, so I'll need that. This is probably all we need. Um, you're going to need, it's called magnet wire. And there's a, a lot, I have a lot of it. I bought a bunch of, um, super, super, super like hairline skinny stuff, thinking that we could do like thousands of wraps and get some way wicked magnetic field stuff. And, um, <laughs> it turns out, uh, all it does is burn off all the um, enamel the moment you put any current to it, so it's kind of a waste. So I have it, and if you really want to try something that's crazy, crazy, uh, you can. It, it should work, but it, I've not been able to get one to work. So we're going to use this enameled wire. I would like to get stuff that's a little bit smaller, um, and I have placed an order for some that's a little bit smaller, but orders just don't seem to get filled the way they used to, so I don't know if I'm going to get any or not. This is just bare copper wire. It has no um, insulation on it at all. There's no jacketing on it. There's no enamel on it. It's um, you need to have a way to get current to your motor core. We're going to use this to make the stand up. Um, I'd like a higher gauge wire and I have some that are higher gauge. That just means it's thicker and will stand up to the weight of the motor core a little bit better, but this is sufficient. I've got two rolls of this and it'll work. The best part about all of these is that basically you can cut them with scissors as long as, you know, you're just careful and use the, uh, you know, use the end of the scissor down in there, but I have some um, wire cutters in case that's too much. Um, you're gonna need a magnetic field. The, the cheapy little poster magnets will work, but if you're having trouble making yours work, then you're using a, a neodymium magnet will work. Um, we'll see, I've got both of them here just in case, so we'll try them both. And you need a way to get current through the system and you need something to tape everything down. Um, I would strongly encourage you to not have the neodymium magnets near your phone when you're doing this. So when, whole, you know, when I say near, my phone's right there. I'm not too worried about bringing it all that close, okay? But um, don't set it on top of your phone or something like that or accidentally have it fly off and stick to your phone. You'll probably be unhappy. Or if it hits the screen, it is very likely to um, shatter the screen. The audio magnets are called curiously strong magnets because they are curiously strong. And... Some of you, I don't know who it will be, is likely to hurt their little fingies with it. So be careful when you're dealing with the curiously strong magnets. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna make are the motor stand-ups. And it's always best to have something that you can use as a form because you wanna try and make really clean circles in the wire for the motor to mount in. So I have found that the top of a Bic pen is almost perfect. In fact, I ordered a whole bag of Bic pens just for this purpose so you guys would have them for this lab. Uh, and maybe to write with, but probably not. For this one, you're going to need... Find the end of the wire. Um, a little tarnish there. I'm going to get rid of that. And um, you don't need much but you're going to be bending it in half. So probably about, uh, what is that? About 30 centimeters, you know, maybe, maybe 20. Um, it looks like it's got a little bit of burn or tarnish in there. You don't want that to be where your actual motor mount's going to be. So look for the parts that are nice and shiny and that's where you want your motor mount to go. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to take and make a loop of wire and this is where I'd say using the pen is super, super helpful. So I looped it around once. So you get a nice, as perfect a circle as possible. Um, the more care you can take, like, to be honest, if I wasn't, if time was not the issue, I probably would redo this one already. And not because it's terrible, but because with every little defect is one more place your system could fail. And um, you'll begin to understand why when you're trying to, wondering why yours won't spin, why sometimes it's just worth it. Just 
spend a little bit of extra time trying to make it as perfect as possible. Now, unfortunately, I really don't have the wire. I didn't do it in the middle because of the tarnished part, but I think this will still work. You're going to want to twist this because what you're trying to make is a stand. And having one of them longer than the other is actually good because although we're going to try and stand them up, because those are our motor stand-ups, you need one side to connect your wire to. You're going to place tape on the other side. Okay? So, you need two of these. Am I actually on camera? Or my hands at least? Alright. Alright, so I'm making the second one. Again, fold it. You want to just do one circle and fold it over. Try and form it to be as uniform and symmetrical as possible. That one's pretty good. I like that one alright. Now the reason you're you're just twisting them is to provide a little bit more reinforcement. Also, it will give you the ability to kind of direct them. You need these to be about the same height. So I have one a little bit longer than the other, so I need to unwind one. So these are going to serve as my, my motor mounts. They will be taped down to the desk so you don't have to have them balance perfect, but you know, you're going to want to have a place to connect your wires for your motor. You're likely going to take and bend these once you actually get your motor in place, but having them nice and straight at the beginning is a good way to start. So those are my motor mounts. Um, any questions about that? All right. So now we're going to wrap our motor core. You're going to use enameled wire for this. I have a ton of it and uh, I buy more every year, um, but just because I have a ton, you know, I don't like to be super wasteful. Uh, there's diminishing returns here. You have to have enough of it where there's enough wire wraps so that you generate a large enough magnetic field for it to interact with the other magnet. Um, Basically, you need enough current in the wire where there's enough force on the motor to get it to flip. But as you build it bigger, it gets heavier. And it also gets less collimated, making it harder to control. So if you're asking exactly how much to use, I say arm length. But that kind of varies by person. So I'm going to use, I don't know, maybe... A little more than my arm you know and again I don't always remember how much that's going to be when I actually start wrapping it but I also know that once I start wrapping it I can choose to cut off a piece if I think it's gonna to be too thick um, Expo markers are almost perfect for this because they're tapered just the right amount but they they form a great a great perfect circle so I leave the cap on because I'm gonna wrap it right here by where the label is and when I'm done I can pull the lid off and get it off really easy but if I have a mistake or if it pops open with the cap on it'll keep it from flying off so you need a little bit of extra wire on both sides but you don't need a ton so I'm going to start with just a little bit of extra you can always trim it off and but you need to have enough because you're going to be using it to tie your motor too so you need to have enough here where you have, you can grip it and tie it. So the actual wrapping of the motor, your, I don't even know what to say, your patience is everything. And I don't know how many to make. I'm thinking I have too much wire here because as I see it, 
so it's pretty thick. It's not as thin as I like this motor wire to be, but this will be kind of, I'm probably going to stop right about there. So I probably have way more than I need. Yeah, I'm probably going to stop there. So this is what you're looking for. And the next part is, is kind of an art. And I can't tell you how to do it perfect. All I can tell you is be patient. That's the best thing I can say. You have to tie the ends of the motor. And this is to hold the wire in place and to keep the coils from coming apart. So all you have to do is pass it through the center you know it's going to make like a loop here at the top. I'm going to pass this through the center. So I've made like a loop at the top there. I'm going to pass this right through the center of that loop I just made. Now, this wire is a little bit thicker than what I used last year, so you might need a tool to kind of pull it tight. Um, I think this wire is probably thick enough where one knot will be enough. Um, if I can find my slightly thinner stuff, sometimes you have to make two knots to keep it from sliding. The first knot's the easy one. The second knot, a little more challenging because you want to try and place the second knot in such a way that it is a diameter. And you may find, like I'm finding, that my big man hands have kind of misshape in the loop so you may want to put it back on the marker to kind of shape it back up because what you need to do <laughs> is you need to kind of make sure that you're going to be creating a diameter here so that's what i'm trying to do have a circle where these two wires that are going to come off form like a diameter i'm going to tie it the same way though okay so all I'm trying to do here is make sure that it's going you know cut straight through and I'm trying to make sure that it looks circular and that I have nice clear axles through the middle wait to, to, to repeat so when you're grabbing like the excess wire you're going through the loop and then going up and then knotting it tying it Just not doing anything more than you, know, you can look at it So the notch has got has to hold together, and this is going to be the motor, and it's pretty heavy. So I'd say I probably have more loops than I need, but also it's unbalanced, and that's going to be a problem. So the next part is to kind of get a feel for how unbalanced it is. It should be nice and level. Clearly, one side's a little heavier than the other. So you might want to carefully kind of massage where these wires exit to try and make it as balanced as possible. This one's not terribly asymmetrical, so I don't feel too bad about it. I'm gonna give it a try anyways. But the next thing I'm gonna do is trim off the excess, so they're about the same on both sides. And this part is critical. If you don't do this part correctly, your motor will not work. And there's nothing you can do to save it. You have to start from scratch. You now need to scratch the enamel off. Um, there's three things I can tell you you should do here. First, you want to scratch it off by scratching it off the same 
surface on both wires and you want to scrape off the side when it is perpendicular to the table. So I'm going to use the table to scrape it. You'll notice I'm holding it perpendicular to the table. A pair of scissors is all you need and you're just going to scrape off the paint. It's pretty easy to tell when you're successful because copper shows out underneath. Not that you can see that from where you are, but I can see it. Do we only do it on one side? Or do we do it I'm not done. That's okay. But we want continuous current. So yes, you'll have to do the other side. But what you don't do is you don't do the whole wire. We want one side to have the, the paint and one side not. And so I'm going to take it, put it on the other side. And I'm going to do the other side of the wire. Now, when doing it, it's details, right? Try and get as close to the inside as possible. This thing's going to move back and forth inside the motor mounts. You need it to be always making contact with the motor mount for there to be current. And although you do want it to shut off, you want to make sure it shuts off when you want it to, not at before. And I can tell I still have a little bit of excess paint. It's okay to spend a little extra time making sure all the paint is off. And this is going to be my motor core, and I'm hoping it's going to work. It's a little heavy. I think it'll be okay. Okay, so my motor core, my stand-ups. So the next job for me is to put my stand-ups where I want them. So... I'm going to get a piece of tape ready. You're going to need probably three pieces of tape, has been my experience. And I'll leave my Gorilla duct tape for us all to use. And I don't know if I'll need the third piece, but third piece just needs to be small to hold the magnets to keep them from sliding across, across. The magnets will not be attracted to the copper, nor will the copper be attracted to the magnets. Okay, so um, they're not paramagnetic. So I'm going to place the first one on the table or wherever you want to have your motor. Just get it taped down nice and good. Now, for your second one, take a moment and measure motor placement is, is not critical. You can always pick it up and move it, and you can always bend the, the stands a little bit. But getting them the right distance apart can really help make this go easier for you. All right. Okay, so seems like it rolls pretty well. Um, you do want to do that just to make sure that it's like I can already tell um, they're not perfectly level, so it's favoring one side over the other. It's going to get bound up on that side. Um, I'm going to have to, to deal with that one way or the other. One way to deal with it is just to make the other side a little bit lower by kind of bringing it and kind of pushing down in here. But, you know, as you start moving this around, you do know that the more you start screwing with it, the more you're probably going to be screwing with it. So if when you spin it kind of stays centralized, you're probably okay. Are we good? All right, so now is the moment of truth. Um, it should work just fine with any magnet, but I want mine to work the first time in front of you, so I'm going to use two neodymium magnets. And I don't know if I'm too far away from the magnets or not. So I'm going to try it here, but it's very likely I'll have to move things around to get it to work. But be careful here. If you connect this and it doesn't start moving right away, um, disconnect it. Or what's going to happen is the motor core is going to get hot. There's no resistance here. It's going to pull two to three amps from your battery, and it will burn you. 
So be careful. Everyone understand? You can't, uh, you know, wire looks the same cold as it does hot. You've heard that phrase before, right? Hot glassware and cold glassware looks the same. Same with uh, wires here. They're not, it's not going to glow and let you know. Um, if you see smoke, though, you're done. You just caught your, uh, you just vaporize your paint, and so it's no longer a motor core anymore. So, um, those alligator clip wires are going to need some of those now. Do you place the magnets directly under the motor core, or like a little bit in front of it? You just need a magnetic field for it to interact with. So experiment a little bit would probably be best. Clearly the direction of the current shouldn't matter that much. It'll just move the opposite direction. So in general, the closer you get to your magnet to the motor core, the better. So you'll notice the first thing I did was bring it now nice and close. So, obviously, Ms. Shelton's not happy about that. So, when I get it and it doesn't work right away, there's two things I look for. The first is I did, you don't know what just happened, but I'm trying to get it to jump under my fingers. And what I mean is if you move it around so you get contact, when there's current, you should feel it jumping under your, under your fingers, and that's what I'm feeling here. So I know that when it's getting contact, I'm getting the kind of interaction I want. So the rest of this is really about balance and making sure that it is getting the, the interaction you want. So getting some interaction here, I'm pretty happy with most of it, but I'm noticing that's kind of going to one side more than the other. There it is. And that's a simple motor. Um, not as fast as I'd like it to be. Um, usually we can get them to go a lot faster than this. It's not terrible. I really think it's because the wire's heavier. And, I mean, I have more than enough current. It was really flipping. You saw it move the magnet when I held it still, mm -hmm. which suggests that it's a powerful enough magnetic field. I think my motor's just too heavy. So I'm thinking maybe not this much wire, but maybe this much wire or less. Uh, making it a little bit lighter should allow it to move faster. You, get, you do get more force on it, but, I mean, it's an inverse relationship. So making it heavier, not always best. If you use, like, more magnets, will it go faster? Yes but I have a limited number of those too. Also, you might find that if you switch the direction of the current, it might favor spinning in one direction over another. So especially for placement of the, magnet, the magnets themselves. But I'd argue that that's pretty good. So this is a simple single pole motor. This is what I want you guys to make. Um, with the amount of time you guys have today, I think you could probably get, if both of you are working, you could probably get your stand-ups made and maybe even get your your core wound. Um, I'm going to leave all the materials here and I'll leave this one running on the desk for a bit, but I do want you to, um, if you're going to not finish today, uh, just put your stuff in the cabinet or pack it away and bring it back tomorrow. I'm going to grade you tomorrow on your ability to have a working motor. So if things don't work out while you're working, you have plenty of time to build and do another one. 
Does that make sense? All right. Any questions about what I'm expecting? How much in wire did we 